Well, to talk more on the rising tensions between the Koreas, we're now joined live by Ivan Ilan, director of the Center on Peace and Liberty at the Independent Institute in the U.S. Uh, Mr. Ilan, many thanks for joining us. Now, are tensions, in your opinion, on the Korean peninsula likely to get worse? And if so, how bad could things get? Well, of course, if they got worse, they would probably there would probably be a war. I think it's very difficult to tell what's going to happen because uh, Kim Jong Il, the North Korean leader, is very erratic, and also he's very paranoid. And I think the U.S. Uh, and South Korea feed a bit into his paranoia because they 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 are going to do uh, submarine anti-submarine exercises. Uh, and I think that probably is the wrong thing to do at this point. They, they think they have to show resolve in the face of um, this uh, attack. And I think it probably is a legitimate North Korean attack on a South Korean uh, ship. But I think that's exactly what uh, Kim Jong-il is trying to provoke tensions so that he can get more rewards. That's usually what he does. And I doubt whether there'll be a war because I think he would his his military is very large, but it's very outmoded, and of course U.S. air power could uh, knock it out. Now, of course, he could he could he can do considerable damage to South Korea and particularly Seoul, which is near the border with his massive artillery. So no one wants a war, and I I don't think there probably will be one. But we go through these cycles of him doing provocative things to get. Uh, rewards from the South Koreans and the United States and the international community. It also give him, gives him attention and uh, gets to play on the world stage. So are you saying, that, do you think that we can trust the findings of this international commission which concluded that the North was indeed responsible for sinking the South Korean warship? Well, I think the South Koreans have handled this pretty pretty uh, cautiously, and I think they did do a, an extensive investigation. And I haven't seen the evidence myself, but they say they have a serial number of a North Korean torpedo, and it's pretty, it's pretty clear that that's what happened. So, uh, and it's uh, it's not out of the realm of possibility that the erratic North Korean regime would do something like that uh, to provoke things. They occasionally like to provoke incidents, as I say. So I would say the the attack was probably genuine on the South Korean ship. Well, you talk about this as an act of provocation on the part of North Korea, but how likely do you think it is that we'll now see sanctions brought against uh, North Korea? And, and do you think that that would help the situation? Yes, well, South Korea has a new president, of course, President Lee, and he takes a tougher line. So he's going to put trade sanctions on uh, uh, North Korea and the other countries, the U.S. and the other allies around there are going to support him in doing that. So I think, yes, there will be sanctions. And I think that's uh, the sanctions probably won't be effective, but they're better than war. But sometimes even the sanctions will lead to war. But in this case, I think the anti-submarine exercises by the U.S. and South Korea uh, are a bit provocative. So I think the real problem is that South Korea probably should be weaned away from the U.S. defense shield and, and defend itself in the long term. South Korea is much wealthier than North Korea. We're not in a situation in 1950 anymore. Uh, South Korea can uh, fend for itself, and I think uh, that would eliminate one uh, provocation uh, that the U.S. has vis-a-vis uh, -vis North Korea, because North Korea is paranoid, and the U.S. presence uh, merely f fuels that. Okay, Mr. Eden, many thanks for those thoughts this uh, evening. That was Ivan Eden, director of the Center on Peace and Liberty at the Independent Institute in the U.S.